Today's a big day because we are gonna get back on the Subaru, finally, with this, an electronic three port boost controller. It's got a manual boost controller on it now. We're gonna update to a electronic boost controller. Let's check it out. Okay, inside the box, we have card. Oh, goody, no instructions. That's super helpful. We got the boost controller right there. Little plug, one, two, three ports, vacuum line, and a sticker. So, I guess we gotta go online trying to figure out where the instructions are for this thing. We are going to not do a stock installation. It's gonna be external wastegate. So, it looks like we are, one port goes to the external wastegate, one port goes to the turbo, and one port goes to the intake. Let's see if we have all those ports on the car. So, why am I switching to an electronic boost controller? Well, this little guy was recommended by every single tuner shop that I talked to. Anybody that dynos cars that tunes them says, oh, you got a manual boost controller? Gotta get rid of it, let's go electronic. So, I had no idea why, big deal. It has boost, the car boosts, it's set at a certain temp or set in a certain PSI, okay? Straight from the website, let's look. Why do we go electronic boost controller? Uh, decrease spool time, plug and play into OEM harness. Work safely with factory Subaru ECU. Nickel plated fittings, wonderful. 15 minute installation time, okay, great, I get it. I guess you can control the creep, you can, can electronically control what PSI you want at certain RPMs, great, fine. They're like 110, $120. Um, should it be too hard? I've never installed one. I'm not a mechanic. What do I know? Well, there's like one, two, three ports. Yeah, three port electronic boost controller. All right, I get it. Let's figure this out. Okay, down in here. Here's our old faithful manual boost controller. These could be dangerous because people like to turn them up. Just crank up the boost. A lot of engines blown probably because of these. So I'm seeing one port, two port. One of them goes to the external wastegate. The other one goes to the turbo right here. It's kind of hard to see, but yes, it is going into the turbo. So now we have to figure out where we're gonna route that third line into the intake. Well, since the manual boost controller came with the car and I don't have the stock one that actually mounts to those two holes there, I looked through my bucket of parts, hardware, all the stuff that I don't like to get rid of just for days like this because I believe these are little grommets that I'm looking for. Um, little rubber mounted. I don't know if it matters if that boost controller is hard mounted to the actual car or not, to the shock tower with vibration, I don't know. So I'm gonna put one of these on. Not sure if I have another one, but it's nice to have extra parts. Installing the boost controller, I found a few little fun harnesses here. Uh, this is the one I unplugged that goes into this green harness. It has wires tapped into it. Uh, I don't know where all this stuff came from. This harness has like a resistor in it and was a bunch of black tape over it, so um, not sure where that's supposed to go or what the original plug it was for. Uh, my best get bet is this. That is it, this looks like it's plugged into the stock controller because it has a couple vacuum lines here that aren't hooked into anything. It has a metal box that says hot. I don't know. So if there's any gurus out there, no, let me know. The last piece of the puzzle is this other port here, which per the instructions, is supposed to go into the intake track. This is the only uh, available port I have for it to tap into. But parts stores usually sell fittings like this. That's not gonna work. That's about the size of the fitting that should go in there. As you can see, the vacuum line is not gonna work. So I've been looking, trying to find reducers to go from a large one into a small little vacuum hose. Not sure, but 
I know these used to run when they first came out years ago. People would just use, you'd leave this third port open. It's actually uh, label number one, but I think you can leave it open to the atmosphere. So we'll see. Go, go, I'll go see if I can find an actual reducer for this. Might have to order it online. Well, it's in there. So last thing to do now is see if it starts. Uh, I might actually get a check engine light because I think that port on the ECU when you're running a manual boost controller has to be turned off. So I'm not sure unless we get in a boost if it's going to show anything, but we're going to just give it a try and see what happens. I know when they tune it, they'll have to turn that port back on and adjust the boost through that. Well, it's running. I don't see any check engine light. Uh, and like I said, it probably won't come on until the boost actually, and you actually get into boost in the car. So we'll see. I'm just gonna baby it until I can get the car tuned. But as of now, it seems to be running. Finally, we got one thing done on this car and it took months. I appreciate everybody's patience, but now SEMA is over, PRI is over, Christmas, New Year's, all over. I need to clean up this filthy garage. I mean, it is a disaster. I have an IEG air oil separator ready to go in. The AEM intake air temp sensor is gonna go in. Uh, still trying to figure out what harness we're gonna use for that and if we're gonna go a hybrid uh, with the MAP sensor or not. Um, I have a bunch of parts for the Tundra. If you wanna um, watch any of those videos, we'll be making some as well. So please stay tuned. I appreciate everybody's support, your patience. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram. I am at Road Patina, and I really appreciate your watching. We'll see you next time.